Chancellor, you'll be running the marathon for the third time next month in aid of a cancer charity. Um, cancer's touched your, your own family and you yourself. What were your feelings watching the broadcast by the Princess of Wales? Well, it was incredibly moving and I think I was touched like everyone else was. And I think the thing that really cut me to the quick was when she explained the hardest thing of all for people who've had cancer in their family, which is how you tell your kids. And that's obviously been a huge thing for her and for uh, the Prince of Wales. And I think, uh, I know my own family, when my brother had cancer, that was the most difficult thing. And I think when she said that, she just connected with everyone. And we all felt, yes, it's the royal family, but in some ways they're like every other family and they're going through the same horrible things that sadly we all have to go through from time to time. Yes, indeed, and uh, it's far more common, I think, than people imagine. That's right, that's right. Um, and uh, that's why it's amazing that, uh, you know, when you have things like the London Marathon, uh, you look around and so many people are raising money for medical causes, um, in my own case, it's the uh, Cancer Centre at the Royal Surrey County Hospital. Um, but I'm sure you noticed that when you were running the marathon as well, uh, Trevor, that uh, that's one of the biggest reasons why people want to do this fundraising. Yes, indeed. Let's come to the news. It's reported that the Kremlin was warned by the American intelligence agencies uh, of a potential attack. Um, were we aware of the heightened uh, threat? I'm afraid I don't know. As, as humble chance of the Exchequer, I don't get uh, that kind of security briefing. But, you know, any civilian loss of life is, is absolutely horrific, even if it happens in countries whose, whose governments we strongly disapprove of. Um, and uh, we can only hope that the perpetrators are caught. How much um, trust do you think we should be placing in the Russian accounts of what's happened? The people they have? in custody, uh, they claim to be the perpetrators, they're talking about Ukrainian involvement. Um, how much should we believe them? Well, I think we have very little confidence in anything the Russian government says. Um, we know that they are uh, creating a, a smokescreen of propaganda to defend an utterly evil invasion of Ukraine. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's not a tragedy when innocent people lose their lives, when you have horrible bombings. But I take what the Russian government says with an enormous pinch of salt, I'm afraid, after what we've seen from them over the last few years. We, um, we're looking at the, these terrible pictures and uh, it seems like it's a long way away, but um, the main thing is that it suggests that Islamic State retains a significant organising capability. Um, should other nations in Europe, including ourselves, be concerned? Absolutely. And uh, we are very lucky in this country that we have incredibly impressive intelligence agencies who have been successful in stopping, uh, in foiling a lot of terrorist threats over recent years. But we have to remain vigilant and, uh, you know, if it is Islamic State, they are utterly indiscriminate uh, in what they do. Um, they are prepared to murder in the most horrific way. And so that's why I think our hearts go out to everyone who's affected by this, wherever they are in the world. And, yes, we have to make sure that we're on our guard. Uh, is there the prospect of our own threat level being lifted? Well, that's decided independently. Um, we have a sort of special system in government to make that happen um, and I know that they will be looking at this kind of event and then they'll be looking at the intelligence that our own intelligence agencies MI5, MI6, uh, GCHQ are picking up and um, what I would say is that whilst we must remain vigilant um, they have been extraordinarily successful in foiling a number of plots, uh, a lot of things that never reach the public domain. So people who are worried about this kind of thing happening at home, you know, we have the very best in the world who are scanning what's happening all around the world, making sure we learn what we need to learn, and then we can take action to keep people safe at home. Let's turn to um, your own domain, the economy. Um, 
we, we spoke actually rather recently. Um, I'm honoured to have come back so quickly. Um, perhaps that's because you delivered a 2p cut in national insurance, inflation's falling. Bank of England forecasting it'll be below target before the end of the year. Um, I'm, I'm assuming that you're, you've come back to tell me that you uh, expect that mortgage rates will shift quite soon and that this is going to be good news, not just for the country, but for the Conservative Party's fortunes. Well, I think it's good news for the economy and I think it shows with inflation down at 3.4% that the difficult decisions we took were the right ones. But that's not actually why I've come on this morning, because the, this is an election year. Um, the country has to make a very big choice. The economy is one of the most important uh, things that people will be thinking about when they cast their vote. And if we want to move decisively to a higher growth model where we have higher living standards for families up and down the country, we've got to make some very difficult choices. And we've heard from the Labour Party this week, uh, the uh, May's lecture by the Shadow Chancellor an hour long, what Labour's policy is. And uh, really my concern is that they are not confronting any of those difficult decisions. Let me just give you one. If we're going to grow, companies are going to need to hire more workers. And we've got to choose, do we want to find those workers through more migration or by making work pay for the six million adults of working age who are not in work or at university. And, uh, you know, we've introduced free childcare, we've changed the pension taxes for older people so they don't feel they have to retire in their 50s. Uh, Mel Stride, the Work and Pension Secretary, is getting a million more people uh, off benefit and back onto work through the Back to Work programme. Okay. But we didn't hear a single thing about welfare reform or controlling migration um, in, in that May's lecture. So that's one of the very big choices that we have to make. So I'm, I'm with you this morning, Trevor, to look forward, not to look back. Well, indeed. And uh, I, I'm very glad that you've been able to lay out your opening pitch for um, the local elections and perhaps a general election. Uh, so we don't have to return to that during this interview. Um, Let's talk about perhaps what might feel uh, like slightly less good news. And you've mentioned uh, migrations. Um, you're stopping more of the small boats, but the people smugglers have got themselves a bigger boat. Um, and the numbers this month are actually up on the same period last year. In fact, uh, 4,306 um, so far this crossing season, which is the highest uh, number of crossings ever, the threat of Rwanda, which has been your sort of centrepiece policy, doesn't seem to be having any deterrent effect. Uh, wh why are you still throwing good money after bad on this Rwanda thing? Well, we're not. Um, and first of all, I think the overall picture, um, I mean, it's, it's a nice graph, and you're very good with your graphs, Trevor, every time I come on the show. But We, we do them especially for you, Chancellor. I know you do, but if I may say very gently that what you haven't shown is the overall picture, which is that crossings are down this year by more than a third compared to last year. And to why? Be fair, I didn't let say me, let me... that the number of boats being stopped is that, but they've just got bigger boats. Yeah, but... The average number in each boat, I think, has gone up about 30, 40%. Yeah, but the, uh, the overall number of people down by a third. And let's be clear why, why is that happening? It's because we have closer cooperation with countries like France, with countries like Albania. Indeed, you can see um, in, in parts of the Mediterranean over the same period, they've actually gone up by up to 80%. And again, I don't want to uh, go over what I was saying before, but this is an election year. And the, the choice in, poli in British politics is between a party that has got a plan. We've been finding it very challenging. You know, we've had to uh, pass several new laws. The courts have not agreed with some of the things we've done so we had to go back to parliament and pass okay. more laws we're in the process of doing that but we have a plan now when we get those flights off to rwanda that will send okay. a very strong signal to these people smugglers and the people okay. that they're saying that if you come to the uk uh, illegally then there is a very good chance okay. that you will be sent straight back abroad to rwanda okay. and that that's a process that has worked in other countries and we think it is the best uh, possible way of stopping this All illegal right. and, and pretty vile trade. All right. Uh, we, we hear a lot about the plan. Um, your colleague Mark Harper mentioned it a dozen times. You've, um, you've mentioned it uh, a few times already this morning. Um, 
Charles, we're still not out of recession. Inflation's still well above target. You're nowhere near building the number of homes that would make an impact on property prices. Council taxes are rising as high as councils can legally uh, get away with. Health uh, uh, hospital waiting lists, highest, near the highest ever. And um, you've had to cancel your biggest infrastructure project, HS2, or big bit of it. Um, I don't need to go on, I hope. Uh, in what universe is all that evidence of the plan working? Well, I can give you lots of things uh, that have gone well, but let no, me... But no, no, let me... I know, I know you've, and we can... That we you, can, and we, we've I've both been doing this many years, Trevor, so we can trade... We can tra have been yeah, telling yeah, me know, but, to judge you. Yeah, let me... Rather than trade statistics, uh, let me put it this way. Um, I became Chancellor about 18 months ago. When I became Chancellor, inflation was 11.1%. And the Independent Office for Budget Responsibility said that living standards were going to fall in the following year by 2%. But, What's actually happened? Inflation has fallen to 3.4%. Living standards have risen. So we faced a very difficult challenge. You started this conversation by talking about Russia. Uh, when I became Chancellor, it was the same year that Russia started its invasion of Ukraine. That caused a massive hike in inflation. And we have, I, we have I, tackled those challenges. Okay. But I, let's I, look forward. I'm very happy... I, I, I don't want to blame you personally, Chance, uh, Chancellor, but um, uh, can we agree... I, I know you don't want to trade statistics, but unfortunately... That's I what like you're going to do. We, so I'm very happy like to, to go, go for it, Trevor. Um, tell me, your, like tell me your next fact. And can I just, yeah, can sure. I just put one to you, which is that over the period of uh, this parliament, uh, a Conservative-led government has presided over a fall in living standards. That is very, very unusual in our lifetimes, isn't it? It is. And let's, let's take that head on. The reason it's unusual is because we've had two things that have happened over the last four years uh, that haven't happened uh, for half a century or more. We had a, a once-in-a-century pandemic um, and we had a 1970s-style energy shock caused by the invasion of Ukraine. And despite that, and that did have an impact on living standards, overall living standards have actually gone up since 2010 in real terms by about £1,700 per household. And they have recovered from those big shocks in the last four years better than countries like Germany, Austria or Sweden. So I don't pretend that dealing with those big shocks hasn't been very, very challenging. But the point I make is that, you know, we have taken very difficult decisions to I do that. I think the first time you interviewed me as Chancellor, I was probably talking about having to put taxes up, unfortunately, having to cut public spending plans. Well, but the result and, of those decisions... And they are still going up. Well, I um, mean, you've made, you've made a couple of cuts in national insurance, but the, the movement of the thresholds... Uh, look, the, hang on, the OK, can is, we talk about that one, then? Because you've, you've mentioned it uh, twice. Well, well, you mentioned... Say, hang on, hang on. Don't, don't, you can't just mention things and then not let me respond, because you mentioned the national okay. insurance cuts. So let me just talk about that one, because, yes, taxes have gone up, um, the big, hang on, let me, let me answer. Thank, okay, thank, you, you, thank, thank you very much. No, no, I will let you come back, but just let me answer that before you get on to the next one. The question in British politics is, do you think they need to stay high or do you want to start to bring them down? Now, in uh, her May's lecture, the Shadow Chancellor <laughs> didn't mention bringing down the tax burden once. I have now brought down taxes significantly yeah. in an oh. autumn statement and in the budget. Uh, They're still not down to where they on. were before. Hold on, let me hold, hold on, on while I respond. So I'm just tax saying that is the, the choice. The is still uh, rising. Yes, I'm, hang on, let me answer. projecting it to 37.1%, yeah. if I remember properly from your speech, because I listened to you very carefully. Well, then, will uh, you give me a chance to answer your questions very carefully now, dearest Trevor, because I am trying. Um, my two... My budgets have actually reduced the tax burden by about 0.6% of GDP. GDP, but I've always been completely open about the fact that we have had to put taxes up to deal with that pandemic. I think it was right to support families through the pandemic and the energy crisis. But the question now is whether you want to bring them down. Now, I look around the world and I do want to bring them down, not just to put more money into people's pockets. That's well, very important. Hang on, hang on, hang on, let me finish. For, You've got to let me, you sorry. can't let me know. Me no, 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 you, you can't interrupt me, Trevor. The, the reason is, I want to bring taxes down hang on, hang is because on, I look around the world and I see that the fastest growing economies are ones with lower tax burdens. So, although I can't get all the way there in one go, I yeah. do think it's the right thing to start to bring down the tax burden. You, 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 keep, you keep saying what the, the, 
uh, you keep telling me about what's going to happen next, but the reality is, for most people in most parts of the country, is that tax burden's going up, if you, particularly if you include things like uh, council tax and so on. Their disposable income is down. My point was that uh, you say that plan is working. And, you know, we can uh, you and I can argue that the abstracts of it, but the truth of the matter is, for most people, it does not feel like that. And you've, as you've said three times this morning, have got to go to an election. This is not an election-winning proposition. Well, what uh, wins elections, because <clears throat> the British public are very smart, is if they can see a government has taken difficult decisions to sort out problems. And they know that we've had a pandemic, we've had an energy crisis. Uh, when you talked about disposable income, you know, people's household incomes, how uh, wealthy they feel. Well, what the Office for Budget Responsibility, completely independent body, said at the budget is that we're going to get back to the pre-pandemic uh, household disposable income next year, two years earlier than they predicted. So the economy has been much more resilient, but because of the decisions that we've taken, inflation has come down faster um, and living standards, as I say, have actually risen over okay. the last year. So that's the reality. I don't pretend it okay. hasn't been difficult. I don't pretend, you know, putting up taxes was one of the difficult decisions that I had to take. But it, that's okay. not the issue. No one disagreed with that when it happened. The issue is whether you now want to start okay. to bring them down. And I think that's the right thing to do if we want to Could be a healthily growing economy. I, I just want to give you very briefly a, a chance to, to deal with something that's come up this week. You said on Twitter X that £100,000 is not a huge salary in your constituency. And I assume that you mean that given high cost of uh, living in your Surrey constituency, parents who might not uh, qualify for the new childcare support now um, should. Um, whatever the truth of it, and, you know, you and I can talk about the numbers and so on, uh, do you regret tweeting that? It, it doesn't sound right, does it, to say £100,000 is not a huge salary? Well, I was talking to a constituent who was pointing out to me that, um, you know, what sounds like a large salary, when you have house prices averaging around £670,000 in my area, if you've got a mortgage and you've got childcare costs, it doesn't go as, as far as you might think. And, and she's right. It doesn't go as far as you might think. And that's why I want to give help to families. Um, and, you know, that's why the childcare measures are very important. We weren't able to afford to fund childcare for people on the highest salaries, but I was simply saying that's something I'd love to be able to look at in the next parliament, but we can't afford to do it now. Chancellor, thank you very much. Come back soon. Thank you, Trevor. It'd be a pleasure.